Hey there, everybody. Now, you know, I call my channel the Jody Journey. This is where I intend to share my life journey. But I was really hoping to actually share some journeys, and so far I've really only been able to share a lot of uh, short trips around the valley here, like when I take my goose to the lake, or um, maybe some of my hikes, or some of my favorite songs, because, you know, one of my favorite things to do is to just drive around. So what I do for a good time is I put some gas in the tank, turn up the techno, and figure out where I can get my truck to go. And so uh, my theory is if you're going to um, have to go out and do something to make a paycheck, I'm just trying to pick something you'd like to do, maybe something that you're good at. And so um, I've had a few driving jobs for that reason. And um, so the people who know me now know that I've been a delivery driver and that I've been uh, a taxi or shuttle driver. Well, the first time I've ever been a taxi driver was when I lived in uh, Denver, Colorado. So from the year... 2000 to 2002 from the age I started around the, my 25th birthday and finished around my 27th birthday and I worked for um I worked for Metro Taxi so that's the uh Ford Explorer you can see the the topper says Metro on it but um it's kind of didn't fit in the picture so anyways um I was working for that company uh we had experienced uh, the 9-11 event so at first I was doing pretty good and then later on, it was really starting to dwindle. And so when you're working for that company, you're self-employed. You pay um, you pay the lease and you pay your gas and then you keep the rest. So you work for commission plus tips pretty much. So um, didn't make a whole lot of money doing it. But um, I would say that the life experience itself was quite valuable and that it gives me a small taste of what it's like to be self-employed or what it might entail to be a small business owner. So... With that being said, um, I wanted to share a nightmare that I had about this job. And um, in reality, I like to work late into the evening. I really enjoy working um, with the partying crowd. So people come on out of clubs and stuff. So most of the time that goes really well and I have fun doing that. But um, every once in a while you meet your asshole. So in this dream, it was very realistic where I was um, at work going to pick up my customers. And so I'm going to a place that's off a... Of, uh, Pecos, uh, maybe off of 88th or 92nd Avenue, and it's like a, a storefront facility that's part of a strip mall. So you pull up, and it's like a big glass window, and there's a bar inside of there where you can see everybody drinking and eating. And um, so I could see my customers standing up and coming out. And so I felt very much like I'm at work, like I had no idea I was dreaming, you know. And, um, and everyone's getting into my cab and everything. But then there's just this one guy that managed to... Um, get into the driver's seat and, and get me out of it. So um, I'm like, hey, I need to sit there, you know? And he's like, oh, I sit here. This is where I sit, you know, just really bossy and condescending. And I let him control me. So this is the point where my dream starts to become surrealistic. And I'm like, um, I don't know, like that cartoon character, Rubber Man, reaching around to the steering wheel and reaching around with my leg to get to the pedals. And I was able to drive and that's all I can remember. And so it's one of those dreams where like, I can't really remember exactly when I had it. Um, it had to be after I quit working there and before I left Denver. And at first it just seemed like, oh, what a weird dream, you know? Like, you, you know, you can't drive like that. How did I do that, you know? And um, But then later on, it seems to make sense. Now I see why I dreamt that. It seems to be very symbolic of some of the things that actually happen, you know, but this is more in a surrealistic presentation. So, um, so if you're somebody that works with me by any chance and you saw the title to this, uh, video, you might be thinking, you better not be talking shit about me. Well, you might not want to take this, uh, too personally because what I'm talking about is a common problem that you see just about anywhere you go. So, you know, most of the jobs that I've worked at, you know, um, in certain classroom settings and, in the in the in the family setting, um, what it is is it's narcissistic behavior. Now, you don't just want to go around calling people narcissists all the time because um, what it is is something that most people do by circumstance. And so, the more I learn about narcissistic behavior, um, I'll be reading through or listening to these lectures and thinking, oh, you know, I'm kind of guilty of some of these things. So it's kind of embarrassing to think that you might actually do some of these things yourself. And really, it's um, when you're being arrogant or you're um, you're you're kind of putting other people down to make yourself better in some way. Um, so, um, 
there's just so many different ways that it unfolds. But the typical case that we experience is like, you know, you're working at a job where, you know, um, there's somebody they got there before you. And a lot of times maybe they get promoted to some sort of um, leadership position. And uh, they deserve merit just for the fact that they've been coming to work consistently and and they, and they typically um, follow along, you know. And so this is somebody that, that will also turn around and, and enforce those policies. So this person deserves merit for that. But a lot of times they also let it go to their head and, and you kind of feel like, you know, this person seems to think they have supremacy over others, you know, so that like anytime you try to communicate something to them, they will blatantly ignore you, even if you're 100% correct, because they're really just too da too lazy to deal with it. Or maybe they don't have the, um, the intellectual competency to understand what you're saying. So what they'll do is they'll undermine you and ignore you and they'll do anything to, you know, disagree and say, pretty much just make you feel like you don't know what you're talking about and so a lot of times what you're dealing with narcissism is you know sometimes these people will even bully you a little bit like they start to get sick of you and they'll do little things to antagonize you so maybe you'll quit your job you know so um so this person will do these things and sometimes they do it in a, in a way that looks like they're really just trying to enforce policies but they're not they're really just trying to get on your nerves you know and, and just drive you crazy and, you know, maybe they don't even know they're doing it. They just, just, it just becomes passive aggression. And so you experience this in a lot of places where, you know, you might get along with most of the people you work with, but then you get this one person, they kind of have it out for you. And they, and they, um, they seem to ignore other people that are doing things that are wrong, but they'll get you every time and stuff like that. So these are type of stuff that you experience. So I think having that dream, it's really kind of a colorful little dream because, um, it's, it, it's somewhat surrealistic. And it seems to represent a lot of things that uh, a lot of times that what we're experiencing with uh, pe other people's behavior. So, um, so what I might say, you know, if, so I'm not going to say where I work or who who this pertains to, but I am in a situation where, like, um, you know, I am a driver, and and there are certain problems that I would like to work out that would actually um, make us more efficient, right? So, so I get with the owner, and he agrees with me. I mean, I know the the owners are married couple; they agree with me quite a bit, and. We seem to understand each other quite a bit, but there's just this one person who, you know, thinks that because he got there first and he had been considered a manager, um, he doesn't seem to hear what I'm saying. It's no, you're going to do this my way, you know. And, and so what I had to say for these people, and you experience this wherever you go, you get this person that like, oh, I got here first, so I'm better than you. Well, yeah, the dinosaurs were here first and you don't see them ruling the planet. And so... You know, so you, you constantly hear people saying, you know, people don't want to work anymore. And I don't think that's true. I think people are happy to go to work and make money. You know, I think that's fair. You know, I'm willing to go out and earn my keep. But what we don't like at work is narcissistic abuse. We don't like people who undermine us and ignore us, you know, and um, make it more difficult to do our job than it would be otherwise, where your job could be quite enjoyable, but you get this one person that, you know, they're always trying to hold you back. They're always trying to kind of you know, make you angry. And then when you do get angry, um, it kind of looks like they're doing nothing wrong. And that's where the gaslighting comes in. Like, you know, they're going to tell you that you don't know what you're talking about and that you're overreacting and that you're creating drama and all these type of things. When all you're really doing is complaining because somebody's making you angry, right? You know, this person's doing stuff to make me angry. Well, then Jody, you need to grow up and you need to this and you need to that. You know what you need to do. So the problems I'm trying to talk about in, um, you know, in multiple jobs. Yeah, I can I can name a few places where I'm trying to um, address a problem. And the person just sort of, sort of makes me seem like I'm the problem and that... Um, uh, and that really, if I would have just kept my mouth shut and do my job, that the problem wouldn't exist. But the problem with that is um, that's kind of the slave and master mentality. Just do what you're told and don't talk back, you know. So um, a lot of businesses would work better if they had respect for the people who are on the field and doing the job. And understand that these are your, um, this is uh, boots on the ground intelligence. This is the person who does the job and knows what the job needs. And so a lot of jobs are like corporate ones where there's somebody in a state far, far away who makes the rules. You know, they're the pencil pushers that make up rules that look good on paper. But then when you come back and say, hey, this isn't working, it's like, well, you don't have the authority to say that it's not working. So um, what you have to say doesn't matter. And so, um, but what's happening now is companies are rising up that have the intelligence to listen to their employees. And so when you um, communicate back and forth with your employees um, and you have a goal you need to meet, it makes everybody happier when they know that, um, that you're more, working more efficiently because we were able to contribute to the plan rather than it's not working efficiently because the people in leadership aren't um, listening. So anyways, the dream I had is about the type of person who um, 
might be in your uh, group who will say, this is where I sit, and they will um, they want to take a position of authority. Um, they don't want to give you the position of empowerment that you need to carry out your duty. And then um, to top it all off, they're also going to scapegoat you and make it seem like you were the problem when in fact they really only made things worse by ignoring you and undermining you. And when you put a crimp on communication, you put a crimp on spirit law, and what happens is it creates misunderstanding and it makes people angry. And um, so your problems don't get solved. Really what happens is two people will get angry and then they part ways. And at the end of the day, um, you probably could have continued working together with that person if they weren't so fucking obstinate. Anyway, so that was my cab driving nightmare. I hope you enjoy it. Everybody have a great day, and we'll talk to you soon.